Hello, good morning. Dear colleagues, dear Marta, Cecile, and Susanna, I'd like to thank you very much for bringing this very interesting topic to this year EA meeting in Barcelona and of course for inviting me to take part in this session. I will talk today about my new research project entitled Textiles and Seals, Relations between Textile Production and Seals and Sealing Practices in Bronze Age Greece that I'm directing I just have started it uh, this year and I will be continuing until 2021. My focus today is textile iconography and the question of interpreting the small scale representations in glyptic that may refer to manufacturing of textiles. I will start with an introduction, very brief, to um, Greece and in the Bronze Age and the Gem Glyptic. Then I will shortly refer to how the imagery of Glyptic has already proved to be a potential source of textile knowledge and what is my methodology and approach to the iconography of textile production. Finally, I will discuss Middle Bronze Age prismatic seals in more detail as a case study, demonstrating that more complex iconographic references to textile production may have also existed. I will close my presentation with some conclusions, obviously, with an important qualification that needs to be remembered, however, that these would be the first observations from the ongoing research. The Bronze Age in uh, Greece generally covers the 3rd and the 2nd millennia BCE. Uh, the Bronze Age cultures developed on the mainland and they comprised the Hellenic and Mycenaean cultures. There was Cycladic culture on Cyclades and Minoan on Crete. Seals were produced and used throughout the large part of the Bronze Age, however with certain geochronological differences between Crete, Cyclades and the mainland. The uninterrupted use of seals from early to late Bronze Age has only been attested <coughs> on Crete. For more than 100 years, Aegean Glyptic has been widely explored as a valuable source of information about many aspects of life in Bronze Age Greece, and intensive research has been undertaken into the strategic use of seals as well as symbolic and talismanic function of seals and their remarkable iconography. However, the complexity of relations between textiles and seals has not been fully explored until now. At first, seals were impressed on clay textile tools, specifically loom weights, a practice that has been observed throughout the entire period of the strategic use of seals. Secondly, textiles, basketry, wicker work, and other organic products preserved as impressions on clay nodules that were still impressed themselves. Cordage impressions, often with knots, preserved on the flat-based nodules, so-called pakken plumben, and inside single hole hanging nodules. There are also um, extensive iconographic references to textiles and seals. They may be classified as descriptions of costumes and fashion, uh, sacral textiles, such as offerings of textiles or textiles that had some symbolic meaning, like sacral knots, motifs resembling textile patterns, and more recently recognized symbolic references, such as spiders, uh, references to raw materials and possibly dye stuffs, such as woody animals, goats and sheep, fibrous plants, such as flax, muricida shells, and possibly even moss producing white silk. And finally, references to textile tools and production, such as loom weights and weavers, first recognized by Brandon Burke, and the warp weighted looms, recognized by me. The last three categories, marked by red blocks, are of special interest in my research. Since the knowledge of textile technology has noticeably progressed and detailed understanding of the Shen Operatua has increased in recent years, iconographic references to textiles are more visible in ancient imagery. Thus, potential raw materials and textile tools may also be recognized in the Jan Glyptic on the basis of knowledge of textile technology, both prehistoric and traditional, as well as experimental archaeology. 
Here, flux, the warp weighted loom and loom, weight mo loom weights motifs are chosen to illustrate my approach to the imagery of textile production in Glyptic. Please note that in this presentation I'm only interested in a visual form of a motif that I identify as a flux, otherwise recognized as a hieroglyphic syllabogram O31 representing an unspecific um, plant, and I'm not going to touch the question of early writing and visual um, um, form of a hieroglyphic um, signs. The preliminary identification of motifs is based on the graphic visual resemblance to actual um, objects here, flax plant with its long stem and lanceolate leaves and seed capsules, and the general form of the warp weighted loom and the appearance of hanging loom weights. This identification may further be supported by iconographic comparanda with other arts and cultures, including the conventions adopted for small-scale representation, for example, in Mesopotamian glyptic. Then, Possible classification of procedural sequences in textile production into iconographic conventions might be investigated, including so-called technical gestures of textile workers, here presumably required by weaving. In case of multi-faced seals, such as the Middle Bronze Age prismatic seals from Crete, the already recognized motifs for example, loom weights or weaver with loom weights, should be compared and cross-checked with motifs represented on other seal faces in order to determine if any combinations of textile-related themes or repertoires existed. This question is especially important for this middleman prisms since no relations between depictions carved on all three seal faces have been discovered so far. The existing hypothesis suggests that prisms may have belonged to officials that have more than one administrative function, and thus seal faces might refer to different responsibilities of an individual. According to other scholars, including the um, recently um, published monograph uh, by Maria Anastasiadou, some of these depictions might have been just imitations of the hieroglyphic inscriptions that also appear on these seals. Could textile production be a theme that possibly linked different seal faces of some of the prismatic seals? To answer this question, let us have a look at the basic statistics first. There are 600 prismatic seals altogether, including the pieces with decoration that is not readable anymore. The motif of weaver with loom weights has been attested on 23 seal faces, and the motif of loom weights alone on 31 seals. Thus, every, at least near every tenth seal refers to general motifs of loom weights depicted alone or with the weaver. The seals such as represented on the slide, with all three phases possibly referring to textiles and textile production, are very rare, yet they exist. The observed combinations comprise a motif showing a woolly animal, that is an animal with horns identified as goat or sheep, sometimes as a greeny, or a protome of such an animal, and a spider, a symbolic reference. There is also a combination with the repeated motif of two woolly uh, animals on two seal faces, here possibly shown in a reproduction sequence, and combinations of a woolly animal and a possible textile tool, such here possible weaving sword and beaters. There are also repeating combinations of the loom weights motif alone or with the weaver, depicted on two seal faces out of the three. The most popular is the combination with woolly animals, and this appears altogether on 23 seal faces. Equal yet differently distributed frequency is observed for the combination with various figures of a male, never female, uh, represented alone or in groups. Then go um, depictions of various pots and vases, sometimes accomp accompanied by a man, four and five accordingly, and the same in number are combinations with spider or spiders, three and six examples. Then goes the motif termed as a duck lion, 
two and six examples, and the fish motif, one and five examples. There are also combinations with a motif of a waterfall, for example, and with ornamental motifs such as a whirl, three examples. Therefore, most of the repeating combinations with the Lomwitz motif do not demonstrate any further references to textiles. On the other hand, the motifs that possibly referred to textile production, such as spiders, are generally popular on prismatic seals. For example, spiders can be recognized on 56 seals. Thus, obviously, spiders were also depicted in combinations with other motifs than Lumwitz. Even if I believe that some of these other combinations with spiders may reveal further relation to textiles in due course, the possible meaning of the spider motif might be different in different combinations. To conclude, the imagery of a geoglyptic reveals indeed manifold references to textile production, including references to raw materials, dye stuffs, textile tools, and works. This multiplicity uh, is especially visible on the Middle Bronze Age prismatic seals from Crete, where the Lumwitz motif appears on every tenth seal, and textile related combinations of motifs might be observed on two or sometimes even three seal faces. The general complexity of textile imagery in a gem glyptic will be further investigated with the help of a database still <laughs> under construction now, designed specifically for textiles and seals project by the Digital Humanities Laboratory of the University of Warsaw. The following concluding remarks will be formulated as questions without um, any secure answers. Yet posing them seems to be helpful for understanding the possible variety of relations between textiles, their imagery, and sealing practices. Assuming that particular faces of prismatic seals indeed corresponded to different administrative responsibilities of an individual seal bearer, it is tempting to identify these possible responsibilities on the basis of iconography. In fact, several crafts or professions such as textile and pot making, sometimes as we have seen represented together, archery, possibly fishing, may be recognized on these seals. Textile production seems to be particularly well represented in this context. Yet, there are also seal faces bearing depictions of various animals, including odd scorpions and centipedes, as well as purely ornamental motifs that may not easily be connected to a specific craft or administrative task. Therefore, the imagery of prismatic seals must have had more complex meaning, even if the suggested correlation between the tasks and images may still be valid. Thirty combinations comprise the Lumwitz motif and the depiction of woolly animals, so it's nearly half of the representations of the Lumwitz motifs is combined with animals. Again, it would be tempting to interpret this regularity in a relation to the responsibilities of an individual Silbier and his or her control of or involvement in two procedural sequences of textile production, wool gathering and weaving. Yet again, the already expressed reservations are valid also for this interpretation. Still, the revealed textile-related combinations of motifs on different seal faces allow to consider the three-sided prismatic seals as potential iconographic entities, uh, which meaning is encoded on all three seal faces. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>